Good morning, Jenny. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Arrow? Absolutely fantastic and very excited to share a conversation with you because I'm a firm believer that, there, that, that there's a lot of witches in the world that don't realize they're witches, but they've got that power. They've got that magic. And I think that a book like yours opens up our eyes to maybe go, oh, really? Absolutely. <laughs> Is that what, what inspired you or influenced you to start putting words in paragraphs? Yes. Um, I... There are so many people who have come in to my shop who have listened to my podcast that are unsure mm -hmm. if they're witches or they don't know if, you know, maybe there's magic in them or they have that misconception that uh, there has to be a family lineage to be magical or a witch. And I wanted people to know that they're able to craft an authentic spiritual magical practice of their very own, that that is innate and that everybody has the capability to be magic. Well, the magic part about your book is the fact that you you kind of eliminate the darkness that has always come with being a witch, because you know you know how this country has been and how evil these preachers and things like that are. So, but, but you're making it seem to be a very positive journey. Absolutely. And there is, you're right, that misconception when people hear the word witch mm -hmm. or magic, they immediately think something dark and scary and i said it earlier today um you know eating babies <laughs> and <laughs> so the wicked witch of the west and all witches are bad and and yes like you said it's preached you know in many churches that witches are evil in fact um just last week um, some people stapled Bible verses to a post outside of my spiritual shop. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's that misconception when I think 99.9% .9 of people who are witches or lead a magical life, they just want to help others and they want to connect with nature in a more magical and intentional way. And they want to nourish their family and nourish their home and themselves. And it's a lot about self-care and finding calm and chaos. And yes, having intentions and maybe doing some spell work that benefits every, like the greater good. Mm, man, there, there's so much of myself within these pages, because when you speak of nature, I mean, I can walk outside in this forest that, you know, back in 1997, we planted 1700 trees because I wanted the animals to come home. Oh, my God. When you walk out there now, it. oh, my God, those animals are there. They don't run. They the hawk flies nearby all the time. I mean, that, that's why I think I can relate with this book, because it really does showcase the magic. And it's not Disney magic. It's something else. Mm hmm. It's you're right. It's not that Disney. It's not the fairies and, you yeah. know, uh, the spark. What is it? The the fairy dust. <laughs> it is it's finding the magic in the mundane, finding magic in the everyday and connecting with that nature. And you're in you're in Charlotte. Yes. Yeah. And um Oh, gosh, you planted, what did you say, 1,700 trees? 1,700 trees, and I'm, I'm sitting above oh. the trees right now. Where my studio is, I'm 23 feet off the ground and overlooking this because the hill drops 95 feet. And so, therefore, I can see everything that lands in these trees. When the hawk comes by, when the deer are walking below, it, it's a spiritual place. It is a spirit, and that is magic. Oh, my gosh, I would love to see that. You need to take a picture and send it to me after we get off Absolutely. here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I would love that. So um, now, what, where, were you connected to the to the forest or to the to the atmosphere of the animal kingdom first? How did you know that you were on this journey? I knew from a very very young age. Um, I always was interested in in all things witchy, <laughs> magical, the occult. I mean, I had of course I had a Ouija board back in the early nineties. I actually fun story connected with some of my ancestors on a Ouija board wow. when I was very young, but didn't realize until about eight or nine years ago that it was ancestors who I connected to. That's a whole other thing. But I always was interested in the occult. And I remember in fourth grade, when we had just heard about the Salem witch trials, I was super excited and I went to the library to check a book out about witchcraft and my teacher said that I couldn't check it out because it's evil. <laughs> and that just and that just made me want to read even more, of course. And um 
And then I discovered Silver Raven Wolf, who is from Pennsylvania like me. She wrote a book called To Ride a Silver Broomstick, and I found it in a Walden bookstore in the back of my shopping mall. Um, and she was a real witch. And that's when I realized I I could be a witch too. It's not just something that's make believe and, you know, playing with the Ouija board or throwing mud pies together mm -hmm. and herbs and flowers and making, you know, spells to be taller because that's what I tried to do, but I still never got past 411. <laughs> and you know, so I realized I could be a real live witch when I was about 13. And that's when over the years, you know, my practice ebbed and flowed. And then about a decade, 12 years ago or so is when I really came back to discover who I was as a magical person. Yeah, yeah, because it's something that follows you, gets stronger and stronger and you can't shake it. So is it is it like Native American medicine men in the way that they would walk their circles of family and community looking for, for probably somebody that has a great amount of energy and people skills and all of a sudden, that's the one I want to teach right there. That is the next one. Is it like that where you, you're, you're constantly searching for, oh, you've got it. Yeah, I think um, it is. <laughs> it's it's a constant, a constant search. Do you mean like, like when I see other people? When you feel it in others, you have to know it. You have got to know it because oh. their energy, their aura. Oh my gosh! Oh, absolutely. I when I have people walk through the door of my shop, mm -hmm. I know immediately. <laughs> oh, they're like me, <laughs> or oh, they're they could be, they mm -hmm. could be. Like I sometimes see just a little fl glimmer of magic, so to speak, in someone and they come in and they're searching for something more. And I know, I know exactly what they're searching for. <laughs> and so I help them, you know, discover their, their spiritual journey. Don't you think this book is also for those people that point fingers when they walk by or they kind of look in the window when they walk by, but they don't want to come inside because of a of a of some sort of fear that's been planted inside their soul by, by, you know, their parents or by their preacher? Absolutely. I think this is for the witch curious, <laughs> something that I've said to my agent, like the witch curious, like, oh, I'm not sure what this is, but it's really accessible to everyone because there's 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 nothing scary about it i don't think there's anything scary about witchcraft in general but it is accessible to the witch curious to people who have practiced for decades and are trying to reconnect to their magical path um to people who don't don't know anything about witchcraft at all because at the heart the part of it this book is about connecting to yourself discovering your inner magic learning what can bring you into the present moment so you can be your best self for others. Are you related to me? Because you're speaking my street. I mean, it's, oh. <laughs> I mean, because ask, Maybe. <laughs> asking yourself the questions and then questioning your answers is how you get to know who you are so you can be present in this moment. But when you when you reflect on the past, though, the goal is not to live in the past, just reflect on it and get back up here to the present. Absolutely. We don't want to focus on the past because it's in the past yeah. and and don't want to focus on the future because that's just anxiety. <laughs> Someone's going to rewrite it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So being in that present, being in that present, this is this is the moment we have because we're not promised tomorrow yeah. and yesterday's already passed. <laughs> I have to have my cozy space and it's in front of the window that overlooks the forest. How can other people find their cozy space so they can really start listening? Mm, I love this. I think, you know, cozy space can look different for a lot of people. Yeah. You have cozy space overlooking acres of what it sounds like, you know, acres of wooded land. I have my cozy space in a small corner in my office at home, I have a little altar set up. Um, others who might live in a small apartment or with a lot of other people might have to find a little cozy space where they're sitting in front of a windowsill and they have some incense and a little mm -hmm. candle. Mm -hmm. It's it's what it's an area that you can carve out that feels like home to you, uh, that can bring you back to your practice and to yourself. And so a lot of people too who live in smaller areas their cozy space might be outside it might not even be where they are living mm -hmm. 
their sacred space, their cozy space might be a park bench, you know, at, at a local, but I think at the end, it's where you feel comfort, where you feel at home. Do you suggest that when somebody is in search of this space, that it should, should be smudged first with the burning of sage? Yeah, I think that absolutely you can cleanse it with any sort of sacred smoke. Mm. You could even uh, ring a bell. You could do sound oh. cleansing. You could take a um, piece of selenite, which is um, a, a mineral, and that does the same thing as sage wood or palo santo or ringing of a bell wood. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you could use any of those things because that then clears the energy. It cleanses the space first so it's fresh for you, especially if you found a space out in public. Um, you don't know how many people have been to that space and what kind of energy mm -hmm. and residual energy is still there. So it's always a good idea to start by cleansing a space. And I even cleanse my space every single morning, nice. even though it's mine. I'm the only one who interacts with it. Any residual energy of even my dogs coming in my office, you know, I, I light my favorite incense and cleanse the space. Well, I like that because I truly believe that we walk with with spirits. It's almost like Russell Crowe and Beautiful Mind. There are people always on our sides. And so when we and when we have those spaces, they're sitting down right there with us and some of them don't want to get up. Absolutely. I agree with you. We do speak the same language. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, when we speak of spells, one of the things that Native American spirituality has taught is that do not ever do black magic, because in order to do that, you have to go through it first before you can cast it onto somebody else. And I, not all witches believe that, um, but I, I'm a person that I, I, personally don't practice any magic involving like curses mm -hmm. or what we call baneful, you know, baneful magic because it could come back to you threefold. That's it. Um, so rather than like doing a curse or, you know, hexing someone, perhaps you would do a cord cutting spell or ritual or a binding ritual. So you're not bringing harm to another person because oftentimes that harm will just come right back. It's, you know, like a, what, a boomerang. It hits them and then it comes right back to you. Um, so I, I agree with that belief. You say something very powerful inside your pages and it and it deals with simplicity and simplicity yes. in this age is something that I, I don't think people have been introduced to it yet. Or if they have, they go, that's I, I, I can't get there. And it's like, it's just simplicity. It, you, and so maybe they need to have a dictionary put in front of them so they can look the word up and then read your book. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. But I think you're right, because. I think people are go, 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 yep. nonstop, do, 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 go, go, go. And we aren't human doings. We are, and I, I don't know who I heard that from. Maybe it was John Kabat-Zinn, which is my favorite meditation teacher, but we are human beings. So just being That's in it. the stillness, like we talked about before, being in the present moment and keeping things simple. I think a lot of people who are coming to magic or witchcraft or a spiritual practice right now, they're seeing a practice modeled through social media and it's very curated feeds. It's aesthetically pleasing altars with elaborate setups and <laughs> crystal balls and all these tools that would cost a fortune when all you need to do magic truly is yourself. Yep. If you want the tools, if you want to go out and buy things, that's fine because those do enhance a practice. But at the end of the day, let's keep it simple. You need yourself, you need an intention, and you need the will to follow through with that intention. That's all we need. Let's keep it simple. I got to tell you, I'm really proud of you when it comes to writing this book and because of your podcast, because podcasting actually began in the late 1980s by the authors. The authors started podcasting. So the fact that oh. you've made this connection between podcasting and writing books right now is so important to the roots of what it is that we do. Oh, I love that. I didn't realize that it started with authors because they wanted their voices to be heard. Oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah, I'm I feel so fortunate that I'm I am an author, but of the success of the podcast. And it's just another way to get the word out about witchcraft and and debunk those misconceptions and 
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Where can people go to find out more about you, Jenny? They can find me on Instagram. I'm at Comfy Cozy Witch. I'm also at ComfyCozyWitch.com. You learn a lot about me through listening to the podcast because it's very authentic. I There's no script. Um, it's just me talking about my life, my spiritual journey. And that is the Comfy Cozy Witch podcast. <laughs> Well, see, you've been called to teach. That's that's that is so important. You're 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 teaching people how to find their inner peace and their simplicity. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much, Arrow. Well, you got to come <laughs> back to this show anytime in the future, and we, maybe we should go for a walk through this forest because it involves so much. And because it's under attack right now, because the city wants to rezone it, it's like, oh my god, and you can't fight it. All you want to do is just listen to the universe. We'll figure it out. We will. Yeah. <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you so much.